Should I hire technology staff? What kinds of technology tasks are suitable for a volunteer? Is a technology managed service provider worth the money? If you have ever asked these questions, this webinar is for you, especially if you manage a nonprofit organization. My name is Karen Graham, and I lead the technology consulting team at MAP for Nonprofits. Our mission at MAP is to unleash the power of nonprofit organizations, and we do that through strategic consulting projects, outsourced services, and leadership development. We're a full service management consulting agency specializing in nonprofits and a nonprofit ourselves. MAP has been providing technology support and IT consulting for nonprofits for over 15 years now. And to be frank, we're wrestling with questions about what form of ongoing support might be best to serve our clients in the future. And we thought we'd share what we are learning. This material was first presented at the Nonprofit Technology Conference, then as a live webinar with N10, and now we are making it available in video form. Here are the main topics in this video. We're not covering software or strategy consulting, but rather focusing on network support, infrastructure, and user support on general productivity tools. You should find this most useful if you are from a small to medium nonprofit organization, say up to $2 million operating budget, without full-time IT staff. So let's get started. Too often we see nonprofits going without, going with a support solution that was recommended by another organization or because of a personal relationship or was the first thing they stumbled upon. It's not necessarily the best fit for the organization's needs. Doing a thorough needs assessment up front will help you make a smart decision. It starts with scope. In other words, how much help do you need and what kind of help is it? You can begin by making a list of all the services you're looking for. That might include help desk, network administration, troubleshooting, website, or others. Ask yourself if IT needs to be divided into different types of work that can be handled differently. For example, maybe your website can be updated by a volunteer and your database be handled by a staff member. When thinking about skill level required, consider how technically challenging your needs are. Next, what availability do you need from your IT support? Do you need someone available during all office hours, after hours, or is a scheduled In visit or on-demand sufficient? Asking how much how fast do you, you need to have afford? these problems solved? Ideally, and what investments would go furthest in supporting your mission? It's easy to make a long list of what you want, right? And knowing you have to work within a budget, you probably have to make some compromises. So get clear in your mind on what is most important. On our website, www.mapfornonprofits.org, there are a bunch of other questions that help you gather all the details together about your existing infrastructure. Doing this upfront work grounds your decision in reality, prevents overlooking any critical areas, and helps you get a more accurate estimate on the cost of various support options. And if you don't have good documentation of your IT infrastructure, by filling out the answers to all of these questions, you will have a good start on that which makes it easier for a new person to take over day-to-day -day maintenance as well as spot strategic issues. Now let's get into an overview of major options and talk about the pros and cons. We'll cover volunteers, internal staff, on-demand services, and managed IT services. In reality, things don't always fit neatly into these categories, but this gives, gives us a way to organize the different approaches to technology support. We'll start with volunteers. I put this first because almost any nonprofit organization can utilize technology volunteers, whether they are the sole source of tech help or they're supplementing other types of support. So it might be less a question of should we use volunteers and more how should we use volunteers. Using IT volunteers can be a great opportunity to get things done and tap into specialized skills. It's also a chance to engage community members in a unique way. On the other hand, we've seen situations where a well-intentioned volunteer has gotten in over his or her head or made choices that are not well aligned with the organization's strategic goals. And productive Another experience risk for everyone. is that a volunteer will set something up. And volunteers are often a better fit for short-term projects or tackling simple items on your someday list. Some examples of good volunteer tasks might be updating your website, updating inventory, setting up a new laptop, or making a video. 
putting the volunteer in charge of ongoing tech support or database support might not be a good idea unless you know that person is absolutely committed for the long term. Also be cautious about granting access to sensitive data or administrative logins. Providing a job description and cheat sheets and being as specific as possible about the outcomes and time frame you are seeking, including the duration of the commitment, will help your volunteer to be successful. Make sure they have a workspace, access to the right people, and a thorough orientation, including your security and privacy policies. A best practice for any kind of volunteer is to make sure you understand what's in it for them and make sure those needs are getting met. Are they looking to build their resume? Do they want a chance to socialize? Are they really fired up about your cause? And some people truly are crazy for the lapel pin, so keep that in mind too. Obviously, don't forget to say thank you. Some of the best places to recruit volunteers are hands-on network, volunteer match, well, community core, the hardware and, and landit.org. Also, your staff. You might also go They're around to observe and overhear things that might lead to insight and make proactive recommendations. They will be in a better position to implement changes successfully and anticipate user-related issues because of their knowledge of your organization and the people involved. On the other hand, friction with particular coworkers might build up and they also might find their objectivity and their credibility deteriorating over time. It's a whole profit in your hometown thing. It might be helpful to bring in a consultant from time to time to provide a different perspective and frankly a fresh voice that people will listen to. Question, is this more or less expensive than using a service? Well, if you calculate the hourly pay for an IT person versus the hourly rate for a service, it might seem like staff is the cheaper way to go for a medium-sized organization, but you also need to consider the cost of providing benefits and professional development. A few other things to think about. With staff, you take on more risk, if they make so a mistake, you are on the line for it. Network. And there's less flexibility in the to job match workload fluctuations to staffing. What the employee is responsible it can be hard for to find one what they call in an expert and for. Probably still need to in hiring, look into what certifications or practice. degrees might be relevant, and also specify who is responsible for keeping those Have credentials up to date. If you're not a technical person, you can invite someone who is to help you with interviewing. Speaking of which, if you don't know much about technology, how do you know your IT person is doing a good job? That's tricky. A minimal amount of disasters and smooth operation probably indicate things are going well. But problems don't necessarily indicate that you hired the wrong person. It may be a result of bad infrastructure the person inherited. Some other things to look for are that documentation is up to date, service contracts are managed, and staff are satisfied with customer service on their help requests. Here are a few details from N10's Technology Staffing and Investments report. In the 2014 report, ratios of technology responsible staff to overall staff average 1 to 8 in small orgs and 1 to 18 in medium orgs. Keep in mind their definition of technology responsible staff could include a webmaster or social media coordinator who has no responsibility for traditional IT stuff. At MAP, we usually recommend you start thinking about hiring an IT professional when you hit 20 employees, or if you're spending over $700 a week on outsourced services. If you need server or database support, or if your organization uses technology a lot in its programs, you'll have a smaller ratio of IT to staff. Up until you hire a dedicated IT person, there is usually someone on staff who is responsible for technology, but they might not specialize in that.